Okay, in the last video we looked at three important vectors associated with a curve, and here we're going to look at two important planes associated to a curve. So the first one is the normal plane. So that contains all vectors that are normal to the curve, and recall that in order to write the equation of a plane, we need a vector which is normal to the plane. So it's a little bit of a geometry game here, but if this normal vector has to contain all vectors normal to the curve, then the vector that is normal to that plane will be tangent to the curve. Great. So to write the equation of a plane, we need the unit tangent vector and a point. And in fact, we don't need the unit tangent vector, we just need any tangent vector, but often we find the unit tangent vector. Okay, good. And then next is the osculating plane, and this is the plane that skims, to the, skims the curve. So in other words, it's the plane that is closest to containing the curve at a given point. And so in this uh, plane, the normal vector to the plane is the binormal vector. So if you look at the last video, we'll talk about how to find the binormal vector and stuff. And then you'll also need a point. So let's look at a couple of examples. So we're going to find the equation of each of these planes for a couple of uh, parametrized curves. So the first one we're going to look at is the one defined by uh, cosine t, sine t, and then the natural log of cosine t. Good. So let's first find the normal plane. And I should say we need a point here. So let's say we're at the point 1, 0, 0. Good. So now notice if we're at the point 1, 0, 0, then we need to find the value of the parameter that puts us at that point. And in fact, the value of the parameter that puts us at that point is t equals 0. Okay, great. Now the normal plane, its uh, normal vector will be the unit tangent vector, or really just any tangent vector. So we can uh, find a tangent vector by taking the derivative of the function that's defining our curve. So that's going to give us minus sine t cos t. And now here we have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over. So we have 1 over cosine t times the derivative of cosine t, which is negative sine t. So this term is obviously minus tangent of t. Okay. Great, but now we want to evaluate this at a point. So if we evaluate this at t equals zero, let's see what we get. We get zero, one, zero. And now if you look at this, this is already a unit vector, so that means we don't have to divide by anything, so our unit tangent vector at t equals zero is zero, one, zero. Okay. Good. Now, we need the equation of the plane whose normal vector is this vector and whose point is this up here. So let's see if we can write that down. Let's recall the equation of a plane with a normal vector given by a, b, c, and a point given by x naught, y naught, z naught is equal to uh, is equal to a x minus x naught plus b y minus y naught plus c z minus z naught equals zero. So given this data, that's the equation of the plane. Okay, so for the equation of our plane, we have zero times x minus one. So this zero comes from this zero in the uh, unit tangent vector, which is, again, normal to the plane that we're looking at, and then plus one y minus zero plus zero z minus zero, all for similar reasons. Good. So now when all is said and done, we have the plane y equals zero, which if you look uh, like in the three-dimensional coordinate space, this is the same thing as what we generally call the xz plane. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll find the equation of the osculating plane. 
Okay, so previously we found that the derivative of the function defining our curve was given by minus sine, cosine, minus tangent. Now we evaluated that at zero and we got something that was um, tangent to the curve at t equals zero and that happened to be a unit vector, but we want something a little bit more general in order to find the normal vector and the binormal vector. So we need to find the unit tangent vector at an arbitrary point. So let's just recall that that is r prime over the magnitude of r prime. Now at the point that we had before, this was just one, but that's not gonna always be the case for arbitrary t. And we need to calculate this for arbitrary t because in order to find the normal vector, we need to take derivatives of this function. Okay, so now notice that's going to be minus sine t cosine t and then minus tan t divided by the magnitude of that vector. So let's just recall that the magnitude of a vector is the square root of what you get by taking the dot product with itself. So that's going to be the square root of, here we have sine squared plus cos squared plus tangent squared t. Good, but now notice that those are gonna combine to one, and then we have one plus tangent squared t. But if you recall some trig identities, that's the same thing as secant squared t. Okay, great, but what is that gonna give us? So we take the square root of that, and we're going to get secant of t, and so we're going to have minus sine t over secant of t, comma, cos t over secant of t, comma, minus tangent of t over secant of t. Good, so that's our unit tangent vector evaluated in an arbitrary point, but we can simplify this because we know secant is one over cosine, so that means one over secant is cosine. So that's going to give us negative sine times cosine, And then I'm just gonna put the entries going down because I'm running out of room. And then we have comma cos squared t, comma minus tangent t uh, times cosine t. Good, but remember tangent is sine over cosine. So this term right here is actually gonna be just sine of t and I should say negative sine of t. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then bring the data to the top that we need in order to go on to the next step. Okay, so I've gotten everything cleaned up and I've kept what we need. So we have this unit tangent vector at an arbitrary t is given by minus sine times cosine, cosine squared and minus sine as we simplified on the last board. Now if you evaluate that at t equals zero, which was what we'll need to do eventually, you get uh, this vector here, zero, one, zero. Okay, good. So remember our goal is to get the binormal vector. So let's just recall that the normal vector that defines the osculating plane is the binormal vector of the curve, which is given by the unit tangent vector of the curve crossed with the normal vector of the curve. So we've got the unit tangent vector at our point, and now what we need is the normal vector at our point. So let's recall that the normal vector is defined by the derivative of the tangent vector divided by the magnitude of that derivative. That makes it a unit normal vector. Okay, great. So let's see what we get there. So here we can take the derivative of each component of this tangent vector. So notice here we'll have to use uh, the product rule. So we'll have minus cos squared t. So that's from taking the derivative of sine. And then we'll have plus sine squared t, that's the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, that cancels this minus. Great, and here we're gonna have to use the chain rule, so that's going to give us negative two cosine t times sine t. Okay, so the minus sign comes out because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then obviously we use the general power rule or the chain rule. Okay, and then finally this is minus cosine of t. Okay, fantastic. Now, 
we can divide this by the length but here's a trick and the trick is that we don't really need to divide it by the length with all of these variables in here because there's no more derivatives or anything that go on in order to find a binormal vector so all we need is our normal vector at our point so let's go ahead and evaluate this at t equals zero to add some simplification to this and notice at t equals zero we're going to get minus one in the first component because sine of zero is zero and cosine of zero is one. We're going to get zero in the second component and we're going to get negative one in the third component. Okay, and then we can divide that by the magnitude, but the magnitude is obviously the square root of two. We've got one plus one. Okay, so fantastic. This is going to give us the vector minus one over root two, zero uh, minus one over root two as follows. Okay, that's our normal vector. So we've got our tangent vector at the given point, our normal vector at a given point. Now we're ready to calculate the binormal vector at this point. I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so now we're heading towards the end. We've got our unit tangent vector, our unit normal vector, and now we can find our unit binormal vector evaluated at zero. And that's going to be given by the tangent vector evaluated at zero crossed with the normal vector evaluated at zero. Okay, so we're going to use the 3 by 3 determinant version of the cross product. So we'll have i, j, k, those unit basis vectors in the first row. And now we have 0, 1, 0, uh, negative 1 by root 2, 0, negative 1 by root 2. And we actually could just have negative 1 and negative 1 there because scaling will not change the direction of this binormal vector, but I'll just leave those uh, 1 over root 2s in uh, for practice. Okay, good. So now we will expand by the first row and the first column. That's going to give us the i entry in our binormal vector. In other words, the first entry. But notice that's going to give us negative 1 over root 2 because we have AD minus BC. Okay. So now let's find the jth component. So we get that by expanding by the second column and the first row, but notice that's gonna give us zeros because we have zeros flanking this. Okay, and then finally we're gonna expand by the first row and the third column. So that's gonna give us zero minus one over root two, which is negative. So that's gonna give us um, positive one over root two. Great, so there's our binormal vector. So here, I'll just bring this up right here. So this is neg negative one over root two, zero, um, positive one over root two. Good, and now we're all set to write the equation of this plane. I'll clean this part up so that we can do that. Okay, so now we're ready to write the equation of the plane. We'll use the same formula that we used before. So we have the first component of this vector, negative one over root two, x minus the x part of the point. Let's recall that the point was given by one, zero, zero. So we have x minus one, and then we have plus zero times y minus zero plus uh, one over root two times z minus zero. Okay, great. And then this is all going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to take some simplification. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by the square root of two. That's not going to change this. And then distributing, I get negative x plus z equals zero. In other words, I can write this as the plane z equals x. And that's our final answer.